Okay, come on. Let's get the takeaway there. Just cut my wrist, turn my shoulders, transfer my weight, turn my hips, hands to the head. Okay, got it. Let's go. Okay, all those things. Ah. Right. Oh. Oh. What a shocking strike. How often do you find yourself over the golf ball thinking of one, two, three, four, five things, trying your absolute best to get this swing right? How's it working out for you? I don't know about you, but so many of my students, they come to me with these, all this stuff in their heads and they say to me, I mean, why am I inconsistent, Danny? Why can't I generate the power? Do you know what? The game is far easier than all of these things. You do not need all these different positions to think about. There is an easier way. And in this week's golf lesson, I want to share with you that easy way. That way, the simple exercise you can do to start to find your own swing, your own natural swing, no matter your age or ability. You know, we're different, we're going to be different sizes, I'm sure we're different ages, we might have different levels of flexibility. Because of that, we need different swings, yeah? And we need to work around all those things. And I'm gonna, I've got a great exercise this week that I wanna share with you. Now, before I do though, look, if you're new to the channel, this is one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Press that little bell button, next subscribe button, and you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. Plus, if you do enjoy what you see, you don't have to remember a thing. There's a downloadable PDF practice plan in the description box below. Just download it and enjoy. Great, so how do you make this swing easy to learn, easy to get going, easy to generate speed, easy to generate consistency? Well, there's just two things you need to learn. You need to have a free flowing golf club. Sounds simple, but this is the thing that often gets people's way. And two, you need to understand how three key forces work in the ground. We're gonna go into that in a second. Get those three key forces right and you can generate some real effortless power and accuracy. So the first thing we need to learn is, is how do we get this club flowing freely? What does it really mean? Well, watch this. We wanna be able to let this club swing as freely as possible, but most people fall at the first hurdle. They don't like this feeling because it feels out of control. They've lost control of the golf ball, so what they try to do is control the club. Completely understandable, completely understandable. But you must learn to really let go. You've got a big lump of metal here. Works the driver as well, we'll go into that in a second. But you've got to let that metal flow freely. So how do you do this? Well, I've got a couple of tools. You can do it with the golf club first. I'll go to this orange whip in a second. The first thing to do is, is if I let this club do this, right, and just let the weight just flow backwards and forwards, centrifugal force is creating a brilliant circle. It's rhythmical, it's powerful, and I'm not having to do it, it's effortless, right? Now watch this, if I try to create that circle, it's, it's not gonna be as smooth, it's certainly not as rhythmical, and it's not as powerful. So it, how have I created it? I've had to let go. So if we wanna create a perfect arc in a golf swing, the very first thing you're gonna need that's gonna really help is a free flowing golf club. Another way to imagine this as well, which is where speed comes from, there's a pressure on the arc. When I'm swinging this club here, centrifugal force is pushing that club out on the arc. This is what creates part of the speed that we're gonna need, okay? But you will have to let go of some of that control. The orange whip is a great training here to really feel it. Sometimes people might feel it, uh, find it difficult sometimes with a club. Feel the orange whip here, you've got this big ball. If you just use your wrists and, and you're guiding it, but watch, if I let the club swing, this orange whip stays straight because I'm allowing that centrifugal force to flow, right? Nice and simple. Now, from there, you could just say, look, trying to hit some golf balls. In fact, I started with this with Laura. I didn't go into any of how to make this efficient because that's the next stage. We need to then, once you start flowing, we need to show you how to make it efficient. But you know what? Start there first. Forget about body, forget about making it efficient. Just hit some shots where you are truly letting go, getting that sense, not caring where the ball goes. So let's have a look at this in action. I don't care where this ball goes. I'm literally going to flow backwards and forwards, no care in the world about where this ball finishes, just literally flowing and getting that momentum. Now, look at that. Barely touched that, letting the club flow. I've actually gone through the green. What's that, 166 yards, a time. Just flown, flown the back of the green. I'm not even doing anything, right? Now, clearly I have some efficiency already built in because I've worked on it, but I am literally allowing this to go. I want you to do that as stage number one. 
So now you've done that, spend some time there. You might even spend a whole practice session just learning to let go, get that sense of freedom. Then what we're going to do is we're going to now start to teach you the three key forces that you need to put into this to make it more powerful and more consistent. So what I want you to do is stand up. If you've got, if you've got a golf club to hand, you can do this. Brilliant. If not, you know, do it, do it later. But what I want you to stand, stand nice and tall. Get your club out in front of you here. And what we're going to do is we're going to lock the legs in place for a second. And we're going to kind of repeat the flowing club backwards and forwards. But in doing so now, we're going to add the first force rotational force. We're going to let our head go backwards and forwards to feel this rotational force. Right, left. Letting the club swing as free as you can, just feeling that rotational force backwards and forwards. Now, in a second, one of the things that makes a golf swing look effortless is the organization of it. If you're finding that you're putting loads of energy into the shot but you're not getting any power, it's because you're getting to the top of the backswing and your power is coming from the wrong end. It's coming from the top to bottom. So you're hitting here with your torso and your arms. You're not starting it with your lower ground. Way too complicated. If you throw a ball, you start with the lower ground and your arm gets slung. This is, you know, it's natural. Your arm's relaxed, it gets slung. You don't go like this, okay? So we're te teaching you now how to get the swing more organized by putting this first force in. So start with the torso here. We're getting the rotational backwards and forwards, right? Then we're gonna gradually work down to start to activate this even more. Watch this. Now what I want you to do is you're swinging. I want you to let your hips start to go now. So look at this, my hips now are gonna move. And I want you to imagine them slinging the club back here, look, and slinging it through. Sling, sling. Notice my hips are always leading the sling, sling. Sling, sling, sling. Now, when you do this, you may have to get, give up some of your inhibitions. It's going to feel out of control. It's going to feel very strange. But you're going to feel this easy motion. So now you've got rotation. You might even want to just hit some golf balls with that first phase in place. Forget about everything else. So literally what you're going to do now, watch, we hit a few shots, just slinging and feeling that we've got rotation. Maybe the head moves a bit. So we're adding rotation into this motion. So let's have another look at this uh, uh, with uh, the next stage in. So swinging the club free, adding rotation, backwards and forwards, just simply flowing backwards and forwards. Okay, now, Maybe, yeah. maybe I need to go down a little bit, <laughs> go down a club. Okay, so I'm flowing. I've got some rotation now into the golf swing. Notice what's happening. As I rotate, my weight goes into the tr uh, heel of my trail foot and my front part of my lead foot as I'm rotating. This is the rotational force, right? Now what we're going to do even more is we're going to then move into the second force, which adds, I call it the momentum force. It's actually horizontal, but we're actually, you're going to sense now that the pressure is going to go to your trail and your forward foot. Now, this isn't, by the way, a sway that most people might ask. We're not moving our torso here. Watch this. I'm shifting pressure. And this is so important. This really sets off the effortlessness. I'm putting pressure here, look. But I'm still rotating, but I feel the pressure to my trail, then to my lead. This is creating momentum backwards and forwards. So you've got the rotation, you've got now momentum, this is a second force flowing. You're going to have to kind of give up some control here. You're gonna be, it's going to be scary, you might miss a few shots, who cares? This is the foundation of a beautifully natural, effortless golf swing. Let's have a look at this in action. So we've got the rotation, we start swinging, I've got the sensation here of the pressure moving to my trail foot, then my front foot. Let's have another look at this. It's a, Second force in play. Just letting it go again. One, two. Let's have a look. That's going to go a little bit left, that one. Who cares? Doesn't matter. We just let it go. And do you know what? This is so good on my body, and it'll be so good on your body too. You're going to swing within yourself. You're going to access so much more of your natural flow that you didn't have before. Now, moving into the third and final force. This is the one for me that kind of is 
adds the extra oomph to your shots, but for me, it also helps to improve your accuracy because it keeps you centered. And it's the vertical force. So the vertical force is simply the extension here. Watch this, as we're swinging up now, the right leg, or my trail leg here, extends a little bit. This gets me swinging this way. And as I come down, look, it's a vertical force where then my lead leg extends. So what I'm doing now, I'm swinging, I'm getting the sensation. You might start again. Start flowing the club freely. Then get the rotational motion. Then the pressure. Then extend, and extend, and extend, and extend, extend, and Away we go, and this is, look, as I extend, that's going to stop me from swaying, because as I extend, I stay centered, and again, off we go. Let's add that third and final force in. Not caring whatsoever where the ball's going, it's to just get that lovely sense of freedom in what you're doing. Let's have another look at this in action. So I'm adding the extension in this. Extend, extend, and away we go. Lovely feeling of flow, and do you know what? I've definitely, <laughs> I've definitely got too much club here, but it doesn't matter. I'm enjoying it. I hope you will enjoy this too. It's such an easy way to get that whole thing going, but you know what? You're going to have to give up some control. Be a child again. You know, I see so many adults, they're so nervous about whether they're going to hit the ball correctly or not. They're not willing to fail enough, and that failure often creates a very static scared looking swing, controlled swing. And that controlled swing, unfortunately, is the foundation for a lack of power, a lack of consistency. And it's just so counterintuitive. So I really hope you give this a go. So let's just summarize, what have we done? Stage number one, have a flowing club. Just start there. Let the club throw freely. Get pressure on the out. Use centrifugal force as your friend. Then, learn to direct that force, learn to direct that pressure. How? You start off initially, look, with rotation. Get the rotational force in, allow, maybe hold this solid so you can feel it, rotate, 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 then, you, then allow your hips to rotate even more, sling, sling, getting the sequencing. Notice how my feet are working backwards and forwards to help this, yeah? Then add the momentum as a second force. I call it momentum force, literally, pressure shift to trail, one, two, one, two, now I've got the momentum. I'm gonna add the vertical force into here now. Extend up, extend up, all doing. Now we've got the swing that we really wanna see. Easy, effortless. That's gonna go a bit left, I think. But who cares, maybe a bit long and left. How far is that gonna go? That's huge, with no effort at all. Eight iron, let's have a look at the numbers. With no effort, 100. And 70 yards, and that is an eight iron. Just no, look, I'm probably about 10 stone ringing wet through. You don't need to be massive, you just need to let this go. So I really hope you enjoyed this uh, video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with one of your friends who could do with a little bit of help, or you know they're complicating a little bit. Remember, there's a free practice guide in the description box below. You don't have to remember a thing, just go ahead and download it. And if you haven't already, please join this channel by pressing that subscribe button and the bell. And remember, I'm doing some small little tips out on Facebook right now. So if, you are, if you're on Facebook and you just fancy a few little short tips that are helping people right now, just head on over to my Facebook page, Danny Maud Van, and I'll see you next week. Until next week, have a great golfing week.